This book is blowing my mind. So you guys know that I've done Fly Lady. Well, I've attempted to do Fly Lady. I kind of go back and forth between a Fly Lady method and a My Method. Spoiler alert, My Method does not work. <laughs> Obviously. But I was given this book by an angel. I, an angel in disguise is what you are. Because I'm reading this book and I'm thinking every few pages. Well, that makes a lot of common sense, Marina. And then I'm like, well, why do I lack common sense? Why did I not think of that already? And then I'm like, I've been told that a thousand times, but I keep on forgetting it. But she has a way of saying it in a way that I don't forget it. Granted, it's been a day, so I might forget it in the future. But short-term memory-wise, it's up here. So have I ever gone all in with Fly Lady? No. Am I about to? Yes. She literally says, I've got it all tabbed up. Like, I'm legit taking notes on Fly Lady. I don't know who she is. She's a genius. Except for one thing. I do got beef with one area in here. Uh, but I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. One thing she said, though, stuck with me so much. She said, I got tapped here. <laughs> she said, putting out fires was how I lived. That's my life. Every day I'm putting out fire. I'm extinguishing some mess somewhere. Putting out fires was how I lived. I reacted to needs rather than planned for them. Basically what she said is she went around spraying everything with fireproof spray by tackling it before it got out of hand. She don't have to chase around wildfires in her house because she's already got everything covered in fireproof spray. Why haven't I been doing that? While reading this, I'm only on page 67. It's 180 something pages. I'm only on page 67. But I'm already turned over a new leaf in life. Every time I turn a page, I turn over a new leaf, it feels like. I got all these tabs. I got a 10 minute clutter eliminate, a crisis cleaning. Crisis cleaning is when you got uninvited guests coming over. That happens to me all the time. I live in a trailer park. I'm the social butterfly of the trailer park, so everybody is always coming to my door. Crisis cleaning is exactly what I need to be learning. Body movement cleaning. Oh, this is the one I got beef with. I'll explain in a minute. Must haves. So did y'all know that there's ostrich feather duster things? I didn't know that. Fly leaf, fly leaf. That's a band from like the 2000s. Fly lady. Fly lady. <laughs> did you know fly lady sells her own ostrich feather dusters? Wow. 10 minute bathroom spruce. Bathroom super scrub, so I'm guessing that's a more in-depth. Uh, 15-minute bedroom. She covers a whole chapter on pillows and the excess amount of pillows that we don't even need. She even suggests certain pillows. 10-minute t-shirt declutter. Hello, I'm always in need of that. 10-minute sock and underwear purge. Mm, what do you think I'm going to be doing today? And hot spots. The last chapter I read was about hot spots, which is areas in your house that accumulate a bunch of clutter. You know, in my instance, my kitchen table. I get a lot of questions every time I feature a fly lady routine in my videos or talk about fly lady at all, about who she is, what she stands for. Fly lady tends to be a big trend here on YouTube. So if you don't watch a lot of YouTube or you just never heard of it before, She's this sweet lady, Marla Silly or Killy. Killy sounds a little bit. She kills. She, Margaret Killy kills the clutter in her home. <laughs> I don't know how you say the last name, but her website is flylady.net. She does like the zone cleaning, the hot spot cleaning that you see a lot of people on YouTube do. She sells stuff. She talks about some sort of ball that you clean your shower with. I don't even know what it's called, but it's something I never heard before. And then she talks about the ostrich feather dusters. And then she talks about like this purple rag that she has. I'm just guessing it's like a microfiber cloth. But she washes her toilet with shampoo. Does that not sound like somebody I'd hang out with? Margaret Killy, who kills the clutter. I have a feeling that we'd be awesome friends. I kind of made this routine baby between her routines, which I very know, I know very little about, and my routine, which I know a whole lot about, and a whole lot of nothing has come out of that mess. One thing that I do do that works, do do. One thing that I do do that works and then I have done forever is orbit cleaning. And that's where I start at one area of the room and I just go in a big circle tackling the perimeter. Then I hop into the middle of it and get the middle area of the room done. That helps me a lot, especially with ADHD. I have severe ADHD, so I need that one track mind, that perimeter. I don't go veering off whenever I know I'm going in a circle. Orbiting. So that does work for me, but I'm thinking I can apply that to anything she puts in here because any room that you tackle, you can always do the orbiting method. It's not the method 
that stumps me. I'm learning that I don't know how to organize. And when I do organize, I always organize the hard way. The beef that I have with her isn't really beef, it's more chicken. It's A, she tells me to get dressed all the way to my tennis shoes for the day. <laughs> Not happening. B, she also tells me to make my bed while doing a snow angel. She like, you're supposed to make your bed while you're still in your bed. I haven't really tried that before, but she specifically specifically talks about making like snow angels in the bed and actually smoothing the sheets out while you're laying in the bed and stuff. She definitely thinks outside of the box, which makes me like her. <laughs> she swishes her toilet with shampoo. It makes me like her. I'm definitely trying the 10 minute uh, clutter eliminate in the kitchen though real quick. As soon as I figure out what we're doing for dinner. We are still doing the pantry challenge, meaning we've been eating a crap ton of chicken because I did a big old Sam's haul a few months ago. I hadn't touched hardly any of the chicken, so we have an overabundance of chicken. I'm having to start to get creative. I was having cool meals where I'm like, oh, this is gonna be cool. We're to the point of the pantry challenge now where it's like, what are we gonna eat? <laughs> so I'm gonna thaw out some of these chicken breast tenderloins and grab this sucker right here because we can use that. We also need some cut green beans because I'm getting creative. I really don't want to make a chicken recipe with beef broth. Hopefully, I oh, there's chicken broth. Fit a bit of a snake in a bit me. All right, so I'm going to basically just toss all this into a casserole dish after some of these are thawed. We're going to do these. Uh, it's basically going to be Nanny's chicken casserole recipe, but with these included because healthy stuff. Because I'm not very knowledgeable on the fly lady routines and all the zone cleaning information and stuff, I decided to start simple just with this 10 minute clutter eliminate thing that I found in this book. It's so easy and it set my day up for complete success. I just set my timer for 10 minutes. Number one, you're supposed to take all the magnets and stuff off your fridge to make it less chaotic on there, which I didn't have any magnets on my fridge, so I didn't have to do that part. But I, then I started from one end of my kitchen, and I'm just going through and removing anything off the counters that I don't want there, anything that's out of its place in my kitchen or bar area, removing all of that so that I can go in and wipe down the counters. I didn't go completely by her step by step because she wanted you to wipe down the counters, then go wipe down the window sills, and then come back and wipe down the stove. I don't have a window sill on this side of my kitchen. My stove is on this side of the kitchen, so I just switched that. <laughs> I mean, you got to do what you got to do to make it work for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I did switch up a few things, but I stuck to the task she gave me. And this is where I find that, okay, Fly Lady must have wheels on her feet because how is she getting this done so fast? I only had like three minutes to spare and I was only halfway through this. One thing about Fly Lady that intrigued the far out of me was that she is such a minimalist when it comes to cleaners. Such a minimalist that she only has window cleaner to clean most of her things with. And she cleans her toilet with shampoo. That's my kind of cleaning. I mean, soap is soap. I'm just, I'm fascinated by the fact that somebody who thinks the way that I do has such a successful business and like has books and stuff that she's wrote. I think that's so cool. <laughs> um, ain't happening. Fly lady, you mean road runner. <laughs> okay, let's see what else I have to do real quick. Wipe down your stove, did that. Use a glass cleaner and paper towels on the inside of your kitchen windows. Finish by shining your sink. Well, I still have to do all of those dishes. So I didn't get the thing done in 10 minutes, but we are gonna still get the daggone thing done. So this 10 minute clutter eliminate is supposed to be like a cleaning challenge that you do in a pinch. So normally you, she said you would take out your dishes and just set them aside and shine your sink and not worry about doing the dishes before you shine your sink. Or you would fill up, this is a hack that I'm going, I know is going to come in handy one day. You're going to fill up your sink with hot soapy water and then put all your dishes in there because dishes in a soapy water pit looks a lot better than dishes just sitting in the sink. Uh, my kind of logic. <coughs> <coughs> Woo! Bitch, don't get these windows clean. It's gonna get my lungs clean. So 
if you're in a hurry and you had minimal dishes in your sink and you didn't have time to wash those dishes, you would set them aside and shine your sink anyway. Or if you had a lot of dishes, you would fill up your sink with hot soapy water and then put your dishes in there to make it look more, you know, appeasing to the eye, I guess. But since I had all the time in the world today, I was doing my daily chores anyway, I decided to just go ahead and do the dishes and then shine my sink. Something about setting a timer that really makes me do more and be more productive when it comes to housework and chores and homemaking and stuff like that. Despite me being very relaxed, I don't beat myself up if I don't make it all my stuff that was on the list if I don't get it all done by the time the timer goes off which is something that fly lady teaches in her books and stuff it's hey it's perfection get it out of your mind we're we're not ever going to be perfect moms we're not ever going to be perfect homemakers we're not ever going to be perfect spouses we're not going to be perfect in general we, we that needs to be out of our mind completely but setting a time frame for specific tasks in my house and then etching those tasks off even if I don't get it done within that time frame helps me so much now timer can go one of two ways you can set the timer and as soon as the timer goes off you can stop drop whatever you're doing drop it like it's hot <laughs> and don't go any further and that's a lot of what fly lady talks about she wants you to set your timer and then once the timer goes off stop but with me I don't do it that way if I have the time so I set the timer and then if it goes off I keep going but that timer is in the back of my mind like okay that timer went off a few minutes ago so I don't need to be spending forever on this task let me just try to get it done quickly and I just go by the, with emotions basically y'all know my homemaking is I go with the flow I go with emotions at the end of this day right here after all the timers all the tasks being etched off I felt so confident in my work as a homemaker okay so what took the average person 10 minutes took me 30 but that is because i had a sink full of dishes i'm sure fly lady doesn't ha ever have that but <laughs> judging by how much she cleans <laughs> um, i had a sink full of dishes and i also had let me mute this tv so you don't just hear dinosaurs while i'm talking i also had a bunch of stuff i had to hand wash uh hand washed my uh, soap dispensers both my hand soap and my dish soap and then I hand so and then I hand washed some cups that can't be put in the dishwasher or that I don't want to put in the dishwasher so I had a whole sink full of dishes from last night I'm sure if you follow the fly lady routine 
religiously like day to day to day to day you probably won't have that at a time early in the day like me so what she said would take 10 minutes probably would take 10 minutes but because i had a sink full of dishes i had to take care of before i could shine my sink it took me 30. that's still pretty daggone good for getting the entire kitchen area cleaned and my bar area now my dining room is separate from my kitchen i don't ever consider it a part of my kitchen when i'm cleaning if i say i'm gonna clean the kitchen i just clean this kitchen area right here but the lady knows what she's doing i have to say that she knows what she's doing that 10 minute tidy up would have saved me in a pinch especially if i had you know visitors coming later this afternoon or i just wanted my house tidied real quick it would work in my last video in the home tour i was talking to you guys about an area in my home that i didn't really know how to use for organization this door here at the end cap it opened and a bunch of you guys were giving me so many good ideas but one of y'all said candles and i was like man i have an overabundance of candles in my closet and i can't hardly walk through my master closet y'all know that so what better thing to put in that area i never thought of that before so i'm gonna put my candles on the end cap here that way they're just easily accessible to me and they're not getting lost and broken and being a safety hazard in the back of my closet because it could fall and break and I could step on it, cut my foot off, and that would just be a bad situation. So, in my mind right now, <laughs> this is safe because I can't cut my foot off with the broken candle if the candle is safely behind the door. <laughs> and then here in a minute, can y'all see the sweat? It is so hot here in Tennessee. Your girl is feeling like a fried gizzard. My air conditioning thing, I had to order a uh, vent what do y'all call it a filter you guys know how you guys remind me every month thank you guys for reminding me every month to change my filter but i also have a reminder on my phone that just how happens it doesn't go off half the time because half the time my phone's on silent mode because i'm always filming but this is the state of my filter so i ordered one we tried to vacuum it off just temporarily and these expensive filters which seem to be the only filters walmart carries for mine anymore they don't do like the green ones anymore uh, they don't vacuum off as easily as the green ones do. So it's an issue. But right now, it's staying at least 72 in here. Um, <laughs> I said that like that was burning up. I expected to see 80 on the thermostat. <laughs> so I was like, 72 in here. <laughs> but, I mean, 72 for me, I'm well insulated, y'all. I'm sweating at, at 69. Usually my air condition is on 68 during the summer and then 70 during the winter. But it's it's been in the upper 90s here in tennessee it has been so hot that's what i was saying before i go on a heat rant my fridge is stinking it smells like an embalming room in that thing so i'm gonna have to go through and i'm gonna have to clear it out and see what it is it's got it smelling like a sewage tank in there it hasn't been cleaned out in a hot minutes so i need to put that on my to-do list today my to-do list feels like a mile long but i'm not gonna stress over it i'm just gonna do what i can do and that's it we're not giving housework the power over us to stress us out and make us resent something that we love to do i love being a homemaker i love cleaning my i don't love cleaning my house but i love having a clean house i'll say it that way <laughs> I, I really am not one of these YouTube moms who just love to clean. Cleaning is not my therapy, but I do love a clean house. And I love the atmosphere my house has when it is clean. It's in my kid's safe place. They've even mentioned, like, Mom, we love it when it's clean in here. Or they'll walk in here and be like, Mom, it's so beautiful and clean. That's what I clean for right there. If you can't clean for you, if you don't have the willpower to clean for you, because I don't have the willpower to clean for me, I don't, if it was up, if it was just me, I wouldn't clean for me probably. I would hope that I get to the point one day that I would, but I, I don't clean for me. Find something important that'll give you a reason to clean. That's how you get the daggone thing done. I think of Jolie walking in here one day and being like, oh, "Mom, it's so cozy and clean in here." When I don't want to clean, and that's what gets my rear end up. And start cleaning. Find your reason why. They are my reason why. And the fact that, you know, above all that, I'm trying to be a Proverbs lady like Jesus wants me. Proverbs lady <laughs> like Jesus wants me to be. Right now, I'm not quite in Proverbs. I'm still kind of in Revelation. It's just catastrophic. <laughs> but we'll get there one day. Cole came over here and noticed. What, Banks? You see something? Cole came over here and noticed how bad these clouds look. Oh, snap. Oh, my lady. Where's the... Look at that. Shoot far. We about to get the belly washer. Check it out. Oops, you see that lightning? Check it out. That's nice. That's a big old bigger. My poor flowers. Oh, look, it's swirling. Look at that. Look, it's swirling around each other. Can y'all see?
pretty gnarly storm. This vase over here next to me is shaking. And my sconces up there are shaking. <laughs> got a dopamine rush, got a major league crush when you're next to me. Got my heart upon my sleeve, can I hide the way I feel when you're next to me, girl? Shane picked this up for me. He was at work one day and had to do some work in the Yankee Candle store. And he saw this and he was like, ooh, I bet Marino liked this. And I do like it. So usually this is for like fall, winter months. But you know how me, I'm totally backwards. <laughs> so we're gonna do this in the, in the hot heat of June. <laughs> for some reason I'm feeling the scent. And I'm gonna use this, which is the apple cider donut wax melts with it to kind of go together. Don't ask me why I'm feeling apple cider. I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing fall. Fall's my favorite time of the year. Fall and Christmas. So, I don't know. But we're going to use it. It's taking days. My dogs are playing with their toys, but it's taking days. Look at my clothes hamper. Honestly, this is probably two loads, but you know, in marina loads, it's probably one. But I'm trying to work on my load size because a lot of you guys would said that that would help my washer. So I don't want to mess my washer up. This washer is a hand-me-down from my mamma. I want to take care of it, and I don't want to do it badly and mess it up just because I'm doing huge loads. So I'm going to try my hardest to do small loads. Sometimes I make decisions like this, and I forget about it, though. I think... um Y'all know when I was little, I had pseudo tumor cerebri, and that's where it's basically it works like a brain tumor, but it's excess fluid on the brain, and it's why I'm blind in my left eye now. It like put a lot of pressure on the optic nerve and stuff. I think honestly that messed with my memory because I I'll think to do something or I'll be told to do something, and then I can do it, but if I don't establish it into a habit. I almost always forget about it and that's why I do a lot with skills too. I'll gain certain skills and then I'll, I'll lose those skills. It's really odd but I really do think that it affected my brain. I was always extremely intelligent as a child and I felt that kind of uh, diminished. My intelligence has diminished drastically but that's why I read a lot because when I read not only like self-help books or, or help books like that or anything like that but like just normal books like fiction books it helps my vocabulary because my vocabulary is very minimum and I know that's from me being at home with four little kids and back in the day and being home with even kids now like I know that that has a lot to do with my vocabulary too but I like to read just to keep my vocabulary going because if I don't read for a while you can tell in my speech and in my vocabulary because it goes back to how it is normally so I don't really know 
if it's from the pseudotumor cerebra. I know I do have a lot of issues, especially with my, my cervical fluid and stuff like that in my spine. So it very well could have affected memory, but I do struggle with that a lot. So that's why I'm always trying to keep up routines and be very habit forming and make habits because if I don't put it into a habit and it, if it doesn't become a habit to me I almost always lose it and forget it you guys could tell me to do something and I would think oh my gosh that's genius like six months ago and now I can't remember it so I'm trying to always work on that that's why I don't mind a bunch of repetitive comments in the comments like a bunch of people saying the same thing over and over it helps <laughs> because I'm someone who you're gonna have to drill it into my brain <laughs> I'm not don't you ever apologize for saying something more than once on this channel it is much appreciated especially when y'all remind me to do things that you've maybe already said before or you just recommend something again or you give me the same advice four times it's appreciated it's much appreciated it never gets on my nerves y'all don't get on my nerves your opinion doesn't get on my nerves your advice doesn't get on my nerves never hold or bite your tongue in the comments of my videos in fear of getting on my nerves or hurting my feelings I have feelings of steel y'all they don't get hurt very easily as far as the excessive amount of advice I will take it any day I'll take it I'm going to switch out this load of laundry while the chicken is baking and throw a little bit of this in my washer for a small load you're waiting for a sock to drop ain't you that's exactly what you're doing. You're waiting for a sock to drop. What's it doing, babes? I'm not dropping you any socks. You can forget it. You can forget it. You can forget it. Watch. She's waiting on a sock, y'all. Watch. I'm going to drop a sock. Watch what she does. Watch. Ready? I did a load of colors so now all I have is a couple of towels in the towel one and about a third of a load of dark clothes so basically my laundry is caught up unless I just want to do mini micro laundry load sizes to get what's in the laundry basket taken care of I'm not gonna do that because it's just a waste of water I'll wait till it accumulates enough to do a small load and then do it and that's how I'll try to keep up with it a load of laundry a day is realistic for me as long as I can apply it to my routine I don't have a good routine in the latter part of oh, chicken son in the latter part of the day my morning routine despite me being chaos is structured and strict because of school with homeschooling you have to have a routine and it has to be on point but me i'm an all or in part i'm an all in or all out person like the fly lady here uh, talks about in this book it's either all in or all out and because i take homeschooling so seriously and it's such a big priority in our lives I don't give any room for any hiccups. If somebody comes over, it's I'm sorry, we're doing homeschooling right now. If I make an appointment, I make it outside of homeschooling. Whatever it is, homeschooling is a priority in the first part of my day. So if I could just get everything else down pat like that, because we've homeschooled my entire life as a parent since Colton was in kindergarten. We're coming up on grade six now. Six years 
including, you know, uh, kindergarten and pre-K, really seven if you think about it, because I did pre-K with him as well. So seven years of homeschooling, I've had to make it a priority. I don't have room to be a hot mess in my homeschooling routine. I know that if I can do that when it comes to homeschooling, I can do that when it comes to anything. It's just getting my priorities straight. And sometimes I do really good, weeks go by, and I'm like, man, who is this? Just call me super mom <laughs> for weeks. And then, it, you know, something happens, makeover happens, um, a super busy week happens, homeschool overflowing into the evening happens. Like I said, our day really revolves around homeschooling, when it starts, when it finishes, if we go over any, what we're learning that week. But I use it as my son to my orbiting system and we just go around it. So when doing this recipe, I didn't even know what I was gonna do actually. <laughs> I was scouring Pinterest, so I was like, I don't have half this stuff. So I was originally gonna use chicken breast, I didn't have enough. So I just took some chicken tenders, I cooked them in the oven, just baked them in the oven real good until they were good, probably dry because we don't risk salmonella over here and you can't hardly salmonella sniff a chicken because chicken smells like chicken to me. So I just cubed up some chicken tenders, kneaded enough to coat the bottom of a bacon dish. So it took quite a few chicken tenders thankfully i had that big old bag from sam's club but it took, it took quite a few then i sprayed down the bacon dish with some vegetable oil and just put the bottom layer of the chicken which is just all the chicken i layered it on the bottom here's where you lose me <laughs> this is gross but i put a whole daggone can of cream and mushroom a whole daggone can of cream of chicken granted it was 95 percent fat free and then i didn't have any sour cream so i substituted with ricotta cheese it worked, but what I will say is if you do this, which I don't know if you will, and I don't know if you should, it's actually pretty good. I gave it a 5 out of 10. Shane gave it a 10 out of 10, and the kids liked it a lot. If you do this, though, only use half a can of cream of mushroom, half a can of chicken, uh, cream of chicken, and then half a cup of ricotta cheese because it was a lot of sauce for not a lot of chicken the sauce really overpowered the chicken it was just too much sauce so i put some green beans on there to make it healthy because once i saw all the cream of chickens i was like and cream of mushrooms and cream of everything i was like okay if we're gonna have to bring it bring up the health notch a little bit so we had to use some green beans and then i just sprinkled it with some of the chicken stovetop stuffing so we got some heated up butter here four tablespoons and we're adding a cup of chicken broth. It's not supposed to float like that. I should have heated it up more. But we're going to mix this together and then pour it over top of this. I poured all of the chunky butter chicken broth mixture onto the top of it so it would bake down in it. And then I cooked this for about 35 minutes on 350, I believe. I just put these in the oven. They're the Frozen Sister Schubert's Parker House Style Yeast Rolls. They're just quick and easy. And then I'm going to do some corn on the cob and then that'll be dinner. Shane got seconds, so that's a good thing. I will have to say though, wow. I pulled that recipe out of my hind end. Wow. I hope that's not literal. <laughs> I hope that's not literal. I just had <clears throat> two helpings of that amazing stuff, but it's time for you to lay down the information. Okay, what do you want to know? What was in it? It's a secret. Please tell me. I know, me. I want to know the it's secret. It's a secret recipe. Tell me the secret. Did you that's almost smart. gag? <laughs> such good sports i'm going to let them have some of this for dessert tonight i did not expect to finish this book today but i literally have 14 pages left it is getting dark though it's getting dark though it's getting quite late so i'm going to go ahead and tackle the fridge um just because it's i've got better light in here whenever it's still daylight and i'm working in the kitchen so i'm going to tackle the fridge real quick and then i'm going to finish this daggone book oh my gosh this I feel like I know her now. Like, I started out saying, who is this lady? Like, who is this lady that does snow angels in her sheets and washes her toilet with shampoo and only has, like, one cleaner on hand, washes her shower while she washes her body? Like, who is this lady? And then the more I've read this, I'm like, oh, man. 
So like this is what it feels like to get all this motherly advice. Like, oh, if you struggle in any area I struggle in that I talk about on my channel, cleaning, routines, organization, anything like that, even personal hygiene, I'm telling you, pick up this book. I'm about to actually have two more that the same friend gave me. Uh, they gave me three in total. I have two more. One's about the body and about eating, I think. And the other one is uh, something similar to this, I'm pretty sure, or something. I encourage you to read this thing. It has given me so many good ideas. It's blown my mind. Like it made me think of things in a totally different way. Tips I had never heard of before. It even goes as far as to talk about like your car, your garage, your camping gear, pests. It goes into roaches, mice, all that stuff. Things that I had no idea about. Um, food it has recipes in here it's like if your mama wrote you a book and gave it to you on your wedding day and said here this is everything you need to know slapped in like 189 pages I have 14 pages left I want to get to my fridge though real quick just to get that done and then we're gonna jump back into that book she has like a whole timer thing you're not supposed to go over the timer like I did earlier but I kind of had to go over the timer in order to do those dishes but this time I'm gonna set a timer and I'm gonna stop when the timer stops because she says I'm a perfectionist and she says it's not gonna be perfect Marina so therapeutic. <laughs> that book is so therapeutic. Fly lady, I don't know who you are, but God bless you. God bless you. While reading this book, she briefly mentioned a refrigerator, and I was like, ooh, I've been needing to tackle my refrigerator. And she gave me some really helpful tips. So she told me to put the vegetables and the stuff that, ooh, that was a science project, and the stuff that goes bad quickly, like vegetables, fruit, stuff like that. She suggested to do the opposite of what I always do, which is keeping my fruits and vegetables deep down in the drawers on the bottom she suggested against that and to put it out in the open because when you put your fruits and vegetables down in the drawers it's kind of out of sight out of mind so she wants you to put them somewhere where you can see them the minute you open the refrigerator door so for me that's on my door right there those clear uh, drawers right there that aren't closed in or at the bottom of the fridge that's where I'm going to start keeping all my vegetables and our fruit and stuff like that and then I'm going to put all the condiments that are there on that door on the very top shelf because let's face it when you want ketchup you're gonna hunt for the ketchup you're not gonna stop at the mustard you're not gonna stop at the a1 sauce you're gonna find that ketchup same with ranch or anything else so i put those on top and then i made the second shelf our dairy shelf the third shelf um the little mini shelf i did for like canned biscuits canned croissants canned pizza dough stuff like that the bottom final shelf is for the kids juices and stuff like that and then i made the two drawers the top one which is the meat and cheese and butter drawer and because we always are looking for the sandwich meat we're always looking for the butter we're always looking for the cheese and then the bottom one underneath that is all of shane's sodas his dr peppers his mountain dew stuff like that i took out the shelves that were on the door because they needed cleaned i'm not even sure if i've ever cleaned those shelves other than just a quick wipe down so i got this, some really really hot water and some soap suds i'm using the method uh dish soap in the yellow i think it's lemongrass it's not my favorite scent but i love method anything so i mean i'll, I'll use whatever method my favorite scent in the method is the black one it smells so good the black dish soap smells so good but i really washed these down and stuff just to give them a good scrub the thing about it is I didn't have to do all this stuff. I could have went down and wiped it down according to her standards. But because I had been doing this off and on all day, my confidence and my homemaking skills was on point. I just wanted to keep going. I, I wasn't tired. I wasn't burnt out because I had given myself grace. I had given myself time. I hadn't been like in a rush like, oh my gosh, I didn't make my to-do list so big that I, I knew I would never even catch up with it. I just did the next thing. That's all I did. I just looked at my task when I finished one. You probably hear my dogs playing with their toys. But when I finished a task, I marked it off and I went to the next thing. I didn't say all these things have to be done in one day. I just went to the next thing because you know what? Tomorrow, the next thing is going to be the next thing I have to do. The next thing is going to, I'm, I'm still going to have that list tomorrow. So why do I feel like I have to get it all done in one day? Look how gross. That's forgotten vegetables in the bottom of the fridge. But why do I always think it's got to be gotten done in one day? Not everything can be done in one day. I am not super mom. I'm so far from it. So I'm just going to do the next thing. That's it. Do the daggone thing. Do the next thing. That's it. Silent music and shimmering gold The strangest feeling about to explode I held my breath to make sure I didn't say something weird Say something weird 
Y'all gotta see how pretty this sunset is. The sky is like pink. Look at that. How pretty. It's a cotton candy sky. Your hair was just so golden, 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 golden. And your eyes were also golden, 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 golden. All my dreams are now golden, 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 golden. I wonder where did you go? I have to know. Golden. The storm did a number on my flowers. I don't really know how well my plants are doing because A, I can't keep Tater from eating them. Um, B, I don't really know, is that like a, is that something other? Banksy. Ah, Banks! No, oh, here, no, I was no, blaming, no. here I was blaming Tater. But it's got no, like no. a, there's like an area right here. But this one has little blooms. Right there, you see those right there? Those yellow blooms? I don't really know what those are, but I'm thinking that's a good sign. That one died, if you can't tell. <laughs> I think that was my cucumber. I don't one of my cucumbers, I don't know. I think that was a bell pepper that the, they ate all the leaves off of. But these, I think, are cucumbers. I can't remember. That one, I think, is a mater plant. <laughs> I hear a child saying hi. So a chapter in this book, you can see I have tabbed the heck out of it <laughs> and highlighted it too. But a chapter in this book talks about the island of misfit tees. And it's just about random clothes that we have in our closet basically that we hold on to for literally no reason and that we never ever wear. So she said to set a timer for 10 minutes and declutter some t-shirts. So I did just that. This is nine pieces of clothing. So that's almost a piece for every minute. I'm going to be taking these to my nanny's church because they're having a yard sale. Um, and she asked me to donate anything that I was going to donate to her, to the church's yard sale. So I'm going to be taking that as well as this plant here that I've had forever that I just keep rotating because I'm not really happy with it anywhere. So we're decluttering this. So all of this will be being donated. Keep in mind that this is just a book full of tasks, basically. She's basically helping you do things that might seem overwhelming to you initially, or just things that you haven't done that you need to do, maybe. While she sets timers and stuff like that and gives you a list of things to get done, it's not really a routine. This isn't her actual routine. This is, has nothing to do with her zone cleaning. If you want an actual, like, step-by-step -step daily routine, then you'll have to go to her website. But this helps for people who aren't informed or knowledgeable enough on her fly lady routine or anything. This is just for the average person, basically. Basically, the person who just happens across her stuff and is like, what is this lady about? This is a good book for you to sit down and start to think on. Like, oh, maybe I should get a routine. But as far as the actual routine and stuff goes, this doesn't really talk a whole lot about zones. This is just for those of us who are like, what is this lady all about? I like her personality. I like the way that she makes you think. And I like the way that she kind of puts you in your place like she called me out hold on let me find it she called me out right here because i remember specifically telling you guys in the last video that there was an area in my house that was super cluttered but i i knew where everything was and it wasn't chaotic to me and she straight up called me out here she says i can just hear some of you insisting that you're incredibly efficient in that cluttered office and that what looks like chaos to the rest of us is really just your system in action <laughs> Like, why'd you have to call me out like that, fly lady? <laughs> I like how she's just brutally honest in a nice way and in a helpful way. If you're wanting her actual routine, you're wanting a printable or you're wanting, like, what she does on a day, her zone cleaning or her, um... Her weekly home blessings. I know that's the thing she does. There's a lot of names. And honestly, when I first went to the website, I was so confused. I'm still so confused. I don't like going to her website because it's a very confusing format to somebody who doesn't know anything about her system. So if you go to her website, flylady.net, and you think it's a little chaotic and stuff like that, <laughs> 
she is the chaos cure but the website can't looks it's not really chaotic it's just like i said it's a it's a it's a hard to read hard to understand format oh i read this book it's 189 pages and i have read it in a day and a half i started it yesterday yesterday evening actually and i finished it today with everything that i've done today i sat down when i had a few minutes and read this sucker and I'm not a fast reader. I'm actually a slow reader. So if you're a faster reader than I am, then you could probably get this done within a couple of hours, honestly. There's a lot of pictures. <laughs> Thank y'all for hanging out with me. Thank y'all for getting the daggone thing done with me today. Let's strive tomorrow to just be a better parent, a better homemaker, a better spouse, a better person, and not a perfect one. Because a lot of times we can get caught up in the perfection of things when they're, we're supposed to be enjoying it. Let's not, let's not hold a grudge when it comes to cleaning our homes. Let's hold it as an honorable thing because it is we care for our family caring for our home is one of the biggest honors ever in my opinion having kids that love you and feel safe with you and a home that you take care of it isn't a chore it's a blessing so tomorrow while you're doing your housework even if you don't have kids even if it's just you whatever it may be even if it's even if all you can do is get up and fix you dinner and clean up the dishes afterwards i'm proud of you keep doing that daggone thing i love y'all thank you for hanging out with me i hope you have a blessed morning evening night whatever it is wherever you're at know that i love you but Jesus loves you so much more. I'll see y'all later.